Hey guys, welcome back to the Bayside Fabrication YouTube channel. So we got uh, pretty much all the systems on the car working and we're just going to work on refining those moving forward. But I wanted to start making this car look good as well. So in between putting some miles on it and getting it ready to uh, turn it up, I want to deal with getting this intercooler freed up a little bit. So as you can see with the stock bumper on, we are quite restrictive uh, for airflow. So the first thing to do is going to be to trim up this bumper and get it a little, uh, get a little shape to it and allow this uh, intercooler to breathe uh, quite a bit more. So that's what I'm going to focus on today. And uh, we're probably going to start with cutting just a little bit and then we're going to take it from there. And also I want to think about uh, starting to build a diffuser type thing. Um, and pull air up from under the car and through that intercooler as well. So that will help keep our uh, air intake temperatures uh, down uh, significantly and, um, you know, just make the car overall uh, a, a better, better well-running unit here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start chopping that up. So I also have some cool ideas for the exhaust. It's got some stainless here that I want to figure out how to how to mount securely. And what I want to do is have like a nice little bezel. So I'll probably polish the stainless up, make it nice and pretty looking. And then, um, yeah, the inside will be separate from the outside, obviously. And now that we have our uh, aftermarket motor mounts, the vibration and everything should be good. I mean, we have a quarter inch all around after it's shimmed and uh that should that should be enough to uh, not contact the outer housing with the exhaust but i think something like that will will look pretty cool so just you know try to get some aesthetics down too i mean it's not necessary but you know it's kind of part of the deal i want this car to look and perform uh you know kind of how i want it and how i envisioned it and this is definitely part of it so Let's uh, get this bumper figured out and see if we can uh, get some more air going through this uh, intercooler, shall we? That's kind of what I'm thinking, guys. I'm gonna start a little bit, uh, a little bit less, and then go more. So the factory bumper reinforcement starts right about here. So I'm gonna just start off by, I just kind of want like a nice profile. So we're just gonna go up. We're gonna run right along this body line here, then come back down and take off this, this about an inch and a half here on this bottom. See how that looks. I'm kinda of gonna be thinking of something like this. Just run with the plane of the uh, intercooler here. And then it's gonna come down and we're gonna create like a scoop underneath the car. And then we'll flat, flat panel right under the motor. So it'll be flat panel straight and then scoop so we're just essentially going to make a giant duct uh coming from underneath the car but i just want to trim up the bumper for now and see how this uh how it looks and then we'll uh we'll go from there but let's get cutting big old intercooler sitting there and honestly it looks a little bit out of place it's just like this big thing hanging down but i think once we add this diffuser it's really gonna tie it in so what i'm thinking with that is i know we mentioned we're gonna use this angle and follow this angle right up and also i'm thinking uh see how we have this arched here i think we have to come straight up with it and have the diffuser fins just coming straight in but the one thing i did notice or the one thing I did want to show you is obviously this whole area is open, but even behind here, I mean, we got at least three and a, I'd say three and a half, three and a half inches there approximately. So it's not like the intercooler is up against a wall or anything. And at this point, I can't really do anything else with it. Like my license plate obviously acts as a wall, so I could cut out all I want behind it. It's not going to really make a difference. 
Uh, the bumperettes here, they're kind of ugly on this car because there's these big plastic ones. However, they don't really bother me that much. And removing them just exposes the metal brackets, which look ugly as well. So um, I think I'm just going to leave them and leave everything as it is and see how well this diffuser works. Because like I said, once we're scooping air up from under the car, I mean, it's really going to be pulling air, uh, pulling air up and through it and like i said my concern is just creating turbulent pocket up in here um but i guess we're just gonna have to see how it goes really we're gonna do the best we can with it so let's get this uh thinking about this diffuser and keep the party rolling huh all right guys i've been working away on this uh diffuser here and so far i have a, a cardboard version set up so i'm kind of thinking something like that disregard the left side but i'm kind of thinking something in this neighborhood the only problem i have with this is it does sit quite low and i think the angle is a little bit off so i kind of have to i think i have to go in and just tilt this up a little bit. But instead of just being like a flat panel diffuser, it's almost like a reverse wing. So if mounted properly to the motor or to the intercooler rather, it'll actually act as like a spoiler because it's going to suck air from up from under the car and then come up and out. And that's essentially going to put downforce on it as well. So it's going to have to kind of be a stout unit the way I'm thinking. Um, but uh yeah we're gonna play around a little bit more like i said that's a little bit too low but it also kind of looks pretty good got it bent up threw a little radius on just like our cardboard cutout here so what i'm going to do is cut out right here just this section, the center section in front of just the intercooler core. And then we're gonna bend the rest of this up. So essentially it's gonna bend like this and it's gonna leave this center dipped down to act as effectively a large NACA duct. So it'll be flat paneled on top and then we'll have a scoop sucking in, a low drag scoop sucking in the air from underneath. So it should shield heat from above and it should also direct all that air up and into the NACA duct, which in turn sends it through the intercooler. So I'm hoping that's how it works out. And we're just gonna, uh, we're just gonna kind of see how it goes. Uh, just so you guys know, cost wise, I bought a four by four sheet of 5052 uh, aluminum, 63 thousandths, cost me $63. So that's the price of this and it, how much it costs. You kind of come to a point with cardboard where it, you just need something a little more rigid and firm to work with. And once I got kind of the rough shape and the idea worked out, I just said, screw it. I'm going to go with aluminum, oversize it just a little bit, and then I can trim off the uh, trim off everything else. But Check this out. I think this will help you understand where we're going with this. So we got our flat panel. Obviously we're gonna rib it and reinforce it with channels. And then we flat panel and then we got our little duct coming in. Here goes nothing guys. It'd be really cool if we could ever put this in a wind tunnel or something one day once all the arrow and stuff is done with this car to see if any of this actually works or if I'm just, uh, you know, not knowing what I'm doing. But obviously I'm not an engineer, uh, but I do kind of have an idea of how the air is flowing through and where to capture and where it needs to go. So you can see that cut out there, just made room from our sway bars, M mounts there. Looks like I can kind of open open this one up a little bit more. But that's what we're achieving. So now, now we're at the point where we can start thinking about 
uh, getting some mounting tabs on it. I just have to, like I said, open up a couple of this, a uh, couple more areas here. But it's nice to have it uh, above the cross member there. That way it's going to essentially, you know, that cross member blocks the air that might be, you know, get caught up and underneath it, which we're not really looking for. We're just looking to keep the air smooth and flat coming out the bottom of this car. And then of course, here's going to be our duct. Now I'm almost thinking, see how it's just the opening in the middle there? I'm almost thinking of winging it out, winging it out here and go right towards the tire. So it actually creates a, uh, like a funnel almost, and we can capture that much more surface area. So that's kind of where we're at. I'm gonna pull these wheels off. They'll allow me to access inside there a little more and we'll see if we can uh, make some mounts here. edges we're throwing a little 45 in the uh the edge here just for strength because this stuff is obviously pretty flimsy so the more we do things like uh add the creases and bends the more rigid it becomes and will be a more stable product because i will be welding in you know a side piece here so you know i can either just weld in a a piece in the middle just to support the middle from flapping around or uh, whatnot but like i said this is all kind of part of the process this is how i do things some guys will you know sit in front of a computer for hours and cad draw out stuff and have it perfect i just kind of look at it and see how it wants to turn out um i guess both ways work but i prefer this way that way i can see in real time how things are going to start panning out and uh and all that Obviously, the future is uh, 3D scanning everything and, you know, throwing it in a printer, but, you know, I'm old school, I guess, so this is how, this is how I'm going to do it until I'm convinced otherwise. It's going to be a cool little part, though. And so far, I'm into this about a half a day, just so you guys know, so uh, I don't have too, too much time into it, but I'll probably have a solid day and a half, two days into making just this panel, just so you guys know, and those are about, you know, eight-hour days, I'd say. So that's what we're doing here. Just a nice smooth transition. And hopefully this might grab just a little more air from this side, obviously, and just kind of direct it in this general direction. But like I said, it also fills in our uh, side here to the scoop, adds rigidity to that, and uh, also adds rigidity to the panel, entire panel itself. So this is how it's looking already. As you can see, it's looking pretty solid. Got our big duct and our scoops coming in there. So that should work pretty darn good if I say so myself. And now all I gotta do is just kind of do something on the side here to just clean up this edge. And uh, I'll probably just add another um, fin right here but I'll, I think I'm gonna go up with it and just kinda 
you know, clean up the look of the whole thing. So I'm gonna knock out some cardboard and see how it looks. But so far I just got it tacked in place. Now this stuff is so thin, you don't really wanna like weld beads on it. So what I'm gonna do is just like heavily tack it in a few areas. And then honestly, this is like, it's all it's doing is adding a little structure to the, to the plate here, but it's not really doing much other than that. So what I'm gonna do is probably just stitch weld it and then I'll see, uh, do some paintable seam sealer to clean up the gap. And then I'm gonna paint it with like a textured paint, I think, uh, or maybe on the bottom side, it'll be smooth. Uh, but maybe on the top, I'll do the, a little texture or something like that. So we'll see how it goes. I'm not really like super concerned about it. pretty solid I wasn't sure about doing the sides um, honestly when it's jacked up it looked a little goofy but you know when it's on the ground it looks cool it's pretty subtle I didn't want this thing to be like super crazy to be honest with you I just wanted to be like I don't know I guess you'd call it OEM plus you could say but uh yeah from this vantage point it looks great and um, I think the only thing I will do, you can see this radius pops out a little bit high here. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna knock that radius back a little bit to be more, more in line with the uh, bumper. But that's something I can do kind of at the very end. I think it looks pretty good. Especially this shot right here. That looks pretty wild. Don't wanna go any lower than that. And from the side, you know, you'll have to imagine this being black. I don't, I don't want to leave it obviously bare or anything like that, but I think it looks pretty good, guys. Gives the car just a little, a little extra. And like I said, when it's all black or whatever I decide to do to it, um, it'll be a little more muted, which I think will really highlight it. So I'm fired up. This is cool. All right, so the next step is to pull it off and just finish stitch welding it, and that's gonna be that. Um, I'm gonna uh, do some testing, because at this point, I'm not even sure if this thing works. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. I mean, everything makes sense, but it'll be interesting to see what happens in real life here. So I'm gonna end it off on, uh, I'm gonna end off this video on that note, just because uh, by the time I get testing and all this other stuff, um, I don't wanna wait another you know week or so to have to post this video. So I just wanna show you guys how I built this, and uh, yeah. Like I said, fingers crossed, hopefully this thing works. We'll keep the eye on the air intake temperatures. Right now, my IATs are about 114, cruising around on a 90 degree day. So that's really not too bad as is. So if I can get any cooler than that, that will be great. If it gets any hotter than that, well, that might be something that we have to evaluate when we get there. So just kind of a trial and error thing. Either way, it looks cool. So we have that going for us, but uh, pretty stoked guys. It's definitely got a, Got an ass on it now, but cool guys. Well, I appreciate y'all tuning in and stay tuned for the next one.